be given the dominion of the Lord, the most gracious, the most merciful, and we send salutations in peace on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in which every single good has come. By the grace and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we find ourselves past almost a week of Ramadan. And by the grace and mercy of Allah, we talked about a few topics in the last few uh, pre taraweeh lessons. And today I'm going to focus on something which is very important and very clear to any person that at once the relationship between them and Allah can become okay. Now we, uh, essentially as a human being, make decisions. We make decisions that we then later on regret. And one day comes where maybe we're listening to some person, a khutbah, or some event happens to us, maybe one of our parents or elders pass away, and it really shakes us to the core, or maybe even a financial event can, right? Like one of the brothers that I knew, he lost his entire car showroom in a hurricane. So subhanAllah, when these events happen, something shakes you inside. And when they shake you, you eventually have to go in chains to Allah SWT. Because you have no other refuge. You're going to the insurance companies, you're going to the different financial institutions, you're going to your friends and family, and they can't really help you. They can't buy you a new showroom of cars. They can't. So everyone is limited except Allah. So you end up turning back to Allah. And this is called Tawbah. This is called Tawbah, forgiveness. And this forgiveness is one of the key things that anyone needs to correct the relationship that they have with Allah SWT. And this is what I wanted to speak about today because this is something that often we say and we essentially don't know how to go about the first things of this uh, forgiveness or Tawbah. And one of the first things that I would get the brothers that listen to this is that if you want to make Tawbah, there's a very simple formula that is mentioned in the first uh, ahadith of Imam Ahmad ibn Muhammad in his book of hadith. This is actually the first hadith, hadith number one. And in that he says that whenever you feel, and what better time than Ramadan when deeds are multiplied and you know, doors of Jahannam are closed and doors of Jannah are open. So what you do is, it's a simple formula. You need to go and perform wudu. You perform wudu and you say to Allah, oh Allah, I am a sinful, worthless slave. That's why. I am the filth and scum of the earth. And I realize that I've made too many mistakes. And I'm surprised that you haven't punished me yet. Honestly, I'm surprised you haven't punished me yet. So I'm going to make wudu in the best way that I can. So you make wudu in the best way that you can. And you finish wudu. And you go out and you pray two rak'ahs of nothing prayer. And this is called Salat al Tawbah. Salat al Tawbah. You bring these two rakahs and you bring them in the best manner that you can. Recite as much as you can and elongate the ruku, the bowing, and elongate the sujood. And once you finish this prayer, you raise your hands up to the skies and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to and beg Him to forgive you. And it is actually important for you to uh, call tears to your eyes. If you can't, then try to make a face that looks like you're crying. If someone was to see you from far away, they'll be like, oh, he's, he's, he's crying. And when you can do this, and you can call some tears to your eyes, and pray to Allah that, oh Allah, I'm a sinful slave, and I ask you for forgiveness. You finish this prayer, your tawbah, inshallah, will be accepted. But there is a condition. And that condition is, if your tawbah revolves around something that you owe to Allah, a right that you owe to Him. You didn't pray the prayers, you didn't pray Fajr for two years, you didn't uh, pay Zakat for ten years, you didn't, um, you know, do uh, Hajj because you just, you know, university exam or some excuse that actually isn't a real excuse for Hajj. You need to start rectifying that. Meaning you need to start to open that account for Hajj, you need to calculate all the Zakat you missed, you need to calculate your prayers that you missed, and you need to start fixing it from that uh, prayer forward. The same thing goes for people. In Islam, we don't believe in you becoming a highway robber and then a murderer and then a serial killer and then you come to Islam and everything's wiped out. No, it doesn't work like that. Sorry. Islam is the only system of religion that actually tells you go back and now fix it. So if you're a highway robber and you spend most of your life cheating and stealing from people, it's not enough that you became a Muslim or you were a Muslim and you started to practice Islam. You actually now have to return that wealth back to the people. 
You had to return that wealth back to the people. Um, and similarly, what you need to do is you need to make sure that you rectify the affairs between you and the creation. Whether it be a brother, a sister, a family member, inheritance issues often come up. All of these things need to be rectified. And when I tell you this, it makes complete sense. You're like, yeah, you know, Toba is not just some magical wand that you go and look for the sheikh on YouTube or the sheikh on Google that tells you that if you pray these two rakahs of Toba, everything's forgiven. I mean, what would be the purpose of imams of fiqh and the greatest scholars from the time of the Prophet until now dedicating entire chapters to making up your prayers, to making up your qada fasts, to making up your zakat that you haven't paid, to um, making tawbah from the stuff that you have done to other people. Why on earth, if it was so easy to get full tawbah, full pardon, would these ulama and scholars and righteous people dedicate books, chapters to these topics? It's because we know deep down inside that when it comes to tawbah, when it comes to forgiveness, we have to earn it. We have to be worthy of it. And this is really what the khulasa of, you know when you say this, these few words, astaghfirullah. It's very easy to say, astaghfirullah. You hear some music at the mall and you know that it's not correct to be hearing it. Astaghfirullah. You do something that you weren't supposed to or you eat something that you later on find out that it was something not right to eat. Astaghfirullah. But really what I've mentioned thus far in this, uh, in this talk, everything can be summarized into these words. Astaghfirullah. That's it. That's Tawbah. And by the grace and mercy of Allah, we have uh, ulama and scholars and righteous people in the community that we are in. And what I ask of you is, is if you have a personal matter in regards to your Tawbah, trust me when I say this, it is more important than your business. It is more important than your job. It is more important than your family. It is more important than your life. It is more important than your children. And it is more important than the whole earth put together. Because this tawbah is the one thing that repeatedly in the Quran people are asking and begging Allah, Oh Allah, let us go back to the world. Oh Allah, just let us go back to the world just for one moment. Just for one moment. Just take us out of Jahannam for one moment. Take us out of this day of judgment for just one moment and allow us to go back. Why on earth are they saying this? Do you know what? The reason they're saying this is because they want to just go back and do Tawbah. That's it. Oh Allah, forgive me. And if you calculate thousands of Salah that you have to make up, Allah Salah, uh, hundreds of fasts, you made up a Zakat, you have tens of thousands to pay, and you die the next day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because you actually tried, and you tried to, let's say you ripped off a million dollars worth of, uh, you know, uh, company shares or something. Now you started the process of trying to pay that back, and you died the next day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by this action, because he knows what's in your heart, will make it such that on that first day if you die, it is as if you did your entire total. And this is the benefit of a true total. So if it has not become evident yet, this, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, is the time to do a sincere tawbah. Leave everyone else. This tawbah will help you. Your family will leave you on, uh, in the grave. In a hole in the floor, they will leave. Your children will leave. Everyone will leave. The only thing that will start the relationship that you have with Allah is this tawbah. Oh Allah, seriously, I have done a lot of things to dunk you, to try different things, but now I'm just, my hands are up. This is what Islam means, by the way. Tasleem is submission. Oh Allah, you know, I've used all my tricks. It didn't work. And now I want to turn to you. So inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawbah that is accepted. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those that are not only forgiven, but they're righteous. Their bad deeds are turned into righteous deeds as well. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And brother,